when all else fails, combat is often the only way forward. And Mithras has an excellent combat system that adds a certain level of realism. If you haven't watched the previous video all about combat basics, then I would highly recommend you watching that first and I will link it in the description below. But in this video, we are going to do some attacking and parrying. So let's get on with it. Okay, before we get into combat, we need to understand two types of roles in Mithras, the opposed role and differential roles. So opposed roles are when skills are matched against each other and the winner is the one who gains the better level of success. So a critical success wins over a standard or a standard role wins over fail. If the level of success is the same, for example, both roll a standard success, then the highest dice roll within that success range wins. So if a 45% is rolled and a 65% is rolled and both are successful, then the 65% is the winner. Differential rolls are similar to opposed roles, but instead of a simple win or lose, it's the difference of the level of success which are compared and calculated. For example, a standard success is one level higher than a fail, and a critical success is one level higher than a standard or two levels higher than a fail. So there is a table on page 51 that shows you how many levels of, of success are gained by the various results. So using a weapon to strike an opponent is a proactive action. So the character needs to use one of their action points. Then they roll their combat style and note the result. If they roll equal or less to their combat style, then they have successfully hit their opponent. It is important to note the roll success level for later on. So it could be like a standard success or a critical success. So with a grin on the face, the opponent swings a mighty axe in a low arc that is heading towards the defender. Now the defender has a few options. They can do nothing at all, in which case the attack will hit them, or they can decide to evade or parry. To evade, they would need to use an action point since evade is a reactive action. Action. And what they will then do is win an opposed role using their evade skill compared to the attacker's initial combat style role. Remember, with an opposed role, it is the level of success that is compared. And if the level of success is the same, then it is the higher role of the dice that counts. And we covered this before earlier on in the video where we looked at opposed roles. A successful evade would mean that the defender takes no damage, they've rolled out of the way, but they will end their turn prone on the floor and they will have to spend their next action getting back up onto their feet. Bonus rule here, if your character has acrobatics as a skill, they can actually use that instead of evade. Alternatively, the defender can opt to parry the incoming attack. To do this, they need to use an action point because it is a reactive action and they will then roll their combat skill and the level of success is compared to the incoming attack. This is using a differential role that we talked about earlier on. So if the attack was a success and the parrying was a fail, then the attacker would have one level of success. If both the um, attack and the defending, the parrying and the attack roll were standard, then there would be no level of success. 
If the defender chooses to do nothing, then it is assumed to be a fail roll and when calculating the difference in the successes. The attacking character gains one combat special for each level of success. So if the defender failed their role then the, and the attacker succeeded, then they would have one level of success and the attacker would get to choose one combat special. If both the attacker and the defender both succeeded with a standard role, then there would be no difference between the levels and so no combat specials would be gained. Although the attack will still hit. Of course, if the attacker gets a critical hit, then they can choose um, critical combat specials if they gain a level of success. Next, the character needs to decide the following things in the following order. First, what combat special they're going to use. Then they roll a d20 to see where the attack landed. And finally, they roll their damage. It's always in that order. Special, hit location, damage. Of course, if the attacker chooses the combat special choose location, then a D120 is not ruled because they've literally chosen where the blow will land. So once the damage has been rolled, we need to determine how much of that damage the defender takes if they have successfully parried. Remember, if they've done an evade, a successful evade, then they take no damage from it. If they failed their parry roll or chose not to parry, then the defender will take the full damage. If the defender has parried successfully, then they need to consult the damage reduction table at the top of page 95 in the core rulebook. If the parrying weapon is roughly the same size as the attacking weapon, then all the damage will be reduced. However, if the attacking weapon is larger than the defending weapon, then half or none of the damage will be reduced. Once the damage has been applied, then we can go on to the next part of the combat. But please remember that there may be additional skill rolls and damage or fatigue that needs to be applied due to the combat special being used. And we'll look at these in another video. You can play this video through as many times as you wish to gain a good understanding of the process. But if you want to see an example of a combat from beginning to end, then watch this video next.